Okay, so members, uh, we'll get started. Um, at the outset, <clears throat> we have one of the articles for the Supplemental Finance Bill, which is the broadband uh, article. And uh, members, we've, we've opted to have this as a, uh, given <clears throat> the significance of the issue, we've opted to have this as a, a separate article and not necessarily within uh, Senator Thomasoni's article. And Senator Schmidt, obviously, for the last several years, has been the author of the broadband request. And so uh, even though, Senator, you're not a division chair, still wanted you to present the article to us. So, Senator Schmidt. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. It's a pleasure to be able to join you today and discuss uh, uh, an issue that I think is uh, of incredible importance for, for Minnesota, and that's the issue of broadband access. Um, we've we spent a lot of time here in the last couple of years discussing this issue, and uh, before I say anything, I should give a lot of credit to, to folks who've been working throughout Minnesota on this issue, uh, from individual communities in every corner of the state, uh, various foundations, including the Landon Foundation, our, our current uh, Governor's Task Force on Broadband, the previous Governor's Task Force on Broadband, and also we have uh, our Office of Broadband Development, all doing incredibly good work on this issue, not to mention the scores of uh, hundreds and thousands of Minnesotans who may not be organized around this issue, but nonetheless care deeply about it. Uh, today we have uh, our broadband article calling for $85 million one-time appropriation for our border-to-border -border broadband fund, which was created in response to very specific feedback we, we garnered in a broadband listening tour in 2014. And during that tour, we heard three themes arise from folks who showed up in all corners of Minnesota as we discussed the issue of broadband access. The first is there's no one-size-fits-all to our broadband challenges in Greater Minnesota. Roughly 20% of our uh, Greater Minnesota lacks access, access at basic speed levels. Uh, the fundamental challenge boils down to a lack of private investment capital in a short return on investment time frame for uh, providers and cooperatives doing good work but uh, of limited means in serving hard to reach areas. And the third theme that arose from that listening tour is we've talked about this issue a lot, we've admired the problem, but now is the time to act. And there's a sense of urgency here, Mr. Chair and committee members, to act and to extend vital 21st century networks to hard to reach areas in Minnesota. So with that, we created our Office of Broadband Development in 2014. They've done incredibly good work. And the year uh, following, I'm sorry, in 2014, we created the, the Border to Border Broadband Fund. And in its two rounds of funding, we've uh, devoted about $30 million to extending vital network connectivity to uh, roughly 10,000 homes throughout Minnesota, roughly 1,000 businesses, and hundreds of anchor institutions, like schools, libraries, and hospitals. And what we're asking for today is to continue that effort in the years ahead with an $85 million appropriation. Uh, our governor's task force currently reports that the, the broadband infrastructure deficit in Minnesota could be as high as $3 billion. Of course, the state isn't going to single-handedly address that issue, but if we're able to incent more investment into hard-to-serve areas, we might be able to, to take a, a good whack at the problem. Uh, and lastly, I should mention that uh, we are going to propose here, in addition to uh, $85 million, I hope in the form of an amendment, the CDF 22 amendment, uh, updating our state speed goals and applying them to our broadband fund. So with that, Mr. Chair, I'd be happy to stand for any questions or if somebody would be willing to move the CDF 22 amendment. So Senator Schmidt, a couple of questions. Um, first of all, now the federal government is has appropriated, what, $85 million for Minnesota for the next, was it five years, six years? Well, Mr. Chair, there is the, the Connect America Fund uh, at, the, at the federal level, and that is devoting $85 million to certain areas and to certain providers in greater Minnesota. And it's a six-year so, time horizon, $85 million a year. So when you say to certain areas, what's the definition of certain areas? Well, there are areas that are, are, are poorly served, uh, that do not, uh, uh, they, they fall well below our state threshold for broadband, which is currently 25 by 3 in Minnesota. And there's a small handful of tel traditional teleco uh, providers that will benefit from the federal dollars. But uh, we could show you a map, I don't have it with me, but it's a limited part of, of greater Minnesota. There are uh, quite a few markets and areas that, that would not be uh, impacted by Connect America fund dollars. So, so are, are you able to um, descri describe that? I mean, is it population centers? Is it uh, towns under 1,000? Uh, what, what kind of areas are serviced as opposed to areas not serviced? It, it's areas that, that do qualify for, or that are uh, provided with service or could be provided with service through traditional telecos. Uh, there, there's a, a handful of them that are receiving funds from the federal government. And there are areas that do not meet basic thresholds uh, of, of four by one service throughout the state. And the, and the second question I have is um, uh, part of the language in, in the article that's being presented says 2% uh, of, of the appropriation is going to go to the commissioner for costs. 
So what are we getting for the 2%? that they're not already doing? Well, Mr. Chair and Committee, it's vitally important that we measure progress in this area. And there was a, a federally uh, uh, funded uh, process for mapping broadband connectivity uh, that came out of the uh, AA, I'm sorry, the ARRA uh, effort. And those dollars no longer continue. So last year, we began funding a state approach to mapping broadband access throughout the state. Uh, I had a, an economics professor in graduate school who said, what gets measured gets done, and that's certainly true when it comes to broadband. We've got to make sure where we are in order to have a sense as to where we want to go. And so continuing those mapping efforts is vitally important to this discussion. We are making progress every year, but uh, unfortunately that progress has been slow. Mr. Chair, I could add that uh, Previous governor's task force on broadband recommended some basic speed goals for Minnesota. Uh, by 2015, those goals stated that every household and business would have access at minimum to 10 megabits per second download, 5 megabits per second upload speed. And we, we fell about 20% short of that goal in greater Minnesota, about 10% short of that goal uh, state, statewide on average. And so we've got some work to do in deploying uh, investments, I'm sorry, investment capital into those hard to reach areas where the return on investment just isn't as competitive as, as high, more highly uh, populated areas. So, so the 1.7 million that's appropriated uh, in that section is going to be used to establish the metrics for what's happened with broadband. Is that in and continue that effort of mapping, working with the provider community to, to establish progress that's made on an annual basis in deploying networks and uh, increasing access to, to those areas that, that currently lack it at, at, at our state accepted speed goals. And then also the, the broadband uh, office, our office of broadband development with Indeed, they uh, they're a pretty lean operation and. Uh, we expect a lot of them. In addition to operating this fund, uh, we have high hopes that they're, they're breaking silos between state agencies and, and helping various parts of government utilize technology and broadband in, in new and important ways. And, and there's a whole host of areas where they can be effective for us, whether it's one-to-one -one initiatives or telehealth or dig once policies. And so we, we've had this fund and, and uh, that's been the focus for the last couple of years, but there's more work that this office does do. But uh, administering this fund is uh, it's a competitive grant process. Uh, it does involve some staff time. Right, would you like to explain the uh, uh, 022 amendment that's been distributed? Sure, Mr. Chair and, and members, the, the amendment that uh, has been distributed uh, draws from two bills that I had introduced privately or, or previously that had worked it, their way through the committee process, Senate File 2447 and Senate File 2448. And essentially what this does is it takes updated state speed goals that were included in the 2016 uh, Governor's uh, Task Force on Broadband recommendations and updates our state speed goals that are currently in statute. Uh, so in section four, you'll see uh, that uh, no later than 2022, all Minnesota businesses and homes shall have access to high-speed broadband that provides minimum download speeds of at least 25 megabits per second and minimum upload speeds of at least three megabits per second. That's one goal. Second goal, no later than 2026, all Minnesota businesses and homes will have access to at least one provider uh, of uh, broadband with download speeds of at least 100 megabits per second and upload speeds of at least 20 megabits per second. And so we put those state speed goals in place of our, our 2015 speed goals that unfortunately were not met. So we're revising the state speed goals per the, the governor's task force report. We're also applying those speed goals in section three to our definitions of unserved and underserved respectively as it pertains to our, uh, our border to border broadband fund. Mr. Chair, I'd be happy to elaborate on that if you'd like. Okay, any questions about the uh, megabits? Or, uh, Senator Thomasoni. Thank you, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman and Sen um, Senator Schmidt. So how does the uh, redefining of our goals um, affect um, somebody like, let's say, a CenturyLink who's, who's br building out broadband in rural Minnesota at one, one down and 10 up, or other way around, one up, 10 down. Um, so how does, what, what, what will happen next? Uh, in that particular area. Sure. Mr. Chair, if I could just maybe take a moment uh, and, and create the context for the, the, the state speed goals and how we've applied them to our thresholds. Uh, in 2014, when we created the, the Border to Border Broadband Fund, we used the federal definition of broadband, which at the time was four by one, to define underserved areas. Uh, the FCC has uh, re you know, uh, recently updated its definition of broadband to 25 by three. So for the second round of funding in our Border to Border Broadband Fund, 25 by three was the, the definition of unserved in Minnesota. And in 2014, we created uh, the underserved designation, which was 10 by 5, which was our state speed goal for 2015. And so what we're proposing to do here is apply or essentially leave that federal definition of, of broadband at 25 by 3 as the threshold for 
unserved and apply our state speed goal for 2026 to our definition of underserved. All, all the while, our priority has always been on the unserved parts of the state, the hardest to reach areas. And so nothing will change with that from, uh, from the previous rounds to this new round, which, in, which includes this funding. Uh, priority will be given to the unserved areas. Those that lack access to 25 by three, that was the same as it was in, in the last funding round, would be the same moving forward. What we do do though, however, is apply that state speed goal of 100 by 20 service to our definition of underserved. So there could possibly be some more parts of Minnesota that would qualify, but they would not have primary priority and they would not be unserved. Okay. So Mr. Chair, to your question, uh, this policy could help better leverage federal dollars to invest in 21st century networks that are going to be competitive for decades ahead. And that's the intent here is to give uh, both our applicants and our Office of Broadband some flexibility uh, with a, with a, keen understanding that the unserved areas are those of greatest priority. However, giving them some priority to best play off of federal dollars that are available to some of our providers. So, Mr. Chairman, my, my point is, is that um, there have been some broadband deployments already. Um, a company like CenturyLink is getting calf the dollars that are for the build out, and the speeds that they're putting in are nothing like what's in this bill. So, um, how, how does that affect, how is this bill affecting what they are deploying you know, like this summer sure. that, um, that will be much different than what this is. Does this require them to do something else or does this just provide a priority to somebody who's willing to do this speed? Mr. Chair, this does not directly uh, guarantee that we're gonna have uh, more robust networks. What it does do though is it ensures that their service territories will be eligible for the grant fund and I would encourage them to apply for grant funding if they would like so that they're able to extend the reach of fiber farther which would enhance the, the uh, I guess the, uh, uh, the robustness of their networks and the, and, the, and the service and the bandwidth. And so that, that's what I'm hoping to accomplish here is that if we're making their service territories eligible for the state grant fund that they can to apply for state grant dollars and build networks that are, are built for the 21st century. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, this does not require them to um, build out their networks to the speeds that are in, the, in this amendment. Mr. Chair, if, they, if, they, if any applicant were to receive state broadband fund dollars, they would have to build up networks that were scalable to 100 megabits per second symmetrical service. That's a network that's built for the 21st century. And so if they receive state grant dollars, they have to invest in technology for the future. So if, Mr. Chairman, so Senator Schmidt, so if they have already received broadband dollars um, before this bill were to pass, <clears throat> does this apply to them, their build out that they might be doing this summer? Mr. Chair, uh, this would, ap would apply prospectively moving forward. Okay. Is there further discussion on uh, the proposed amendment? Does anyone wish to move the amendment? Okay. Um, all right, did should I ask again, Sir, Sir Schmidt? Maybe uh, this amendment is important for our funds, so I would hope that somebody would be willing to move the amendment. Oh, Senator Marty decided then to uh, move the amendment with that editorial comment. Um, is there further discussion on the amendment? Probably not, I would guess. Uh, so, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Uh, uh, Sir Schmidt. Um, I'd asked the question a minute ago relative to the 2%, and then Mr. Nauman uh, pointed out the this, this section of statute. I, so I asked just generally, but apparently the present statute already sets up a fund to do some of this. Is that correct? Mr. Chair, we have funded the Office of Broadband Development with a, a separate appropriation ongoing in the base. Uh, for the activities that occur outside of administering the broadband fund. As I had mentioned previously, there are, there are a lot of other things that we ask our Office of Broadband Development to do besides administer the fund. And so what we've done in the past is, is allow them to use a, a small portion of the, of the appropriation for administering the fund. But, but there's already the ability to transfer money into that fund in present statute. So why are we, in effect, doing this twice? I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I, I, I was under the impression we're being consistent with what we've done in the past in terms of funding the fund and also the, uh, the cost for I, administering the fund. Okay, I don't have the, 
Mr. Nauman showed the section to me. Did so, I mean, you, you, Ms. you want to just read the? Mr. Chair, I'd be pleased to. Um, so, first and foremost, it's probably worth noting that the 85 million that's proposed in this article would be deposited into 116, the, the fund created under 116 J 396, the border to border broadband fund. Mm -hmm. And then there's a series of expenditures outlined in that that, that are eligible for those resources to be used. Um, and among them is money in the account may be used only to grant, to grant awards under, sex, uh, under a, another section of law, including costs by the Department of, of uh, Employment and Economic Development to administer that section. So I think in a sense, it appears at least, I think to your point, that there might be some cross-feeding or redundancy. Okay. Senator Schmidt, do well, you? Mr. Chair, this is the first I would have heard of that, and uh, I did not bring the article yeah. to your committee, so I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of it. But uh, I, to my knowledge, we have been consistent with what we've done the past two funding right. rounds. Let, They've got authority. Uh, let me ask Senator Schmidt. Uh, obviously, uh, assuming we pass this article, we do it to, to place it in the full bill to be heard, hopefully, at the end of the week. Maybe you could check on that. I mean, my inclination is I'm. I'm I'm not sure I would ask for an amendment right now, but uh, uh, maybe you could check on what seems to be duplicative language between what you're presenting in um, uh, Section B, uh, or Part B of Section 2, and uh, what's in present statute. And I don't want to blindside you with this because you don't have the statute in front of you, but if you would please take a look, maybe check with Mr. Nauman uh, relative to that, because it sure looks like... Um, we're creating that much more of a fund for uh, the department to uh, to use, and obviously your intent is to make sure we get the money out for service to uh, areas that uh, are underserved in terms of broadband. And this will take not huge amounts of money, but it's going to take some money away from that. And if they already have the ability to do it, I'm not quite sure why you would want to do it, um, given the strength of uh, your advocacy for extend broadband. Mr. Chair, I'd be happy. Thanks for bringing that potential discrepancy to, to my attention. I'd be happy to look at it and work with uh, you and the committee to, to get this right. Okay. Is there further discussion on uh, the proposed uh, broadband article? Would anybody like any further questions for Senator Schmidt? Would anybody like to move the article? Senator Stumpf moves that the broadband article as amended uh, be recommended to pass and re-referred for the, uh, well, I'm glad we got staff here this morning, uh, for uh, re-referred uh, for uh, possible inclusion in the supplemental finance bill, which is uh, yet unnamed. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you very much, Senator Schmidt. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Committee.